Hello and welcome to another Beam NG tutorial. In this video I will show you how to improve the steering, either if you are using a controller or the keyboard. Before we start, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and activate the notifications bell. Hello and welcome to another Beam NG tutorial. In this video I will show you how to improve the steering, either if you are using a controller or the keyboard. Before we start, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and activate the notifications bell. To do that, let's go to Mods, then Repository, and then in the search box, search for Advanced 10 subscribe to this mod that I am showing. As you can see in the mods description there are a lot of options that we can configure. Just follow along and I will explain you each of them. Once you downloaded the mod, let's go to UI Apps tab and add the UI of Advanced Steering. As you can see there are plenty of options and things to tune, so let's take them one by one. The first option that we can see is the Enable, Disable checkbox for the mod. Every time you touch it press CT or L plus R on your keyboard to reload the level. We will ignore the log data and jump right to presets. Presets allow you to store your settings and recall them later. Presets are stored separately from your regular save settings. All they do is store the values in the UI app as a preset file, or load the values from a preset back into the UI app. The load button will copy the values from the selected preset into the UI app. At this point the values are neither applied or saved as the active settings, so you still have to use the apply and save buttons for that. The store button will write the values from the UI app to the selected preset. Factory presets are read-only shown by a lock icon so you can't save over those. Note that the store button is not the same as the save button. The save button saves to the active slot which is what's actually applied to newly spawned cars. Whereas the store button only writes to a preset file. The factory presets are as follows. Default, responsive, stable, full drift assist. Now let me explain them one by one. The default is a balanced preset that should work fine for most driving styles without being too intrusive. It's somewhere in between the responsive and stable presets. Responsive is a bit more direct feeling than the default preset and provides less assistance overall. Stable is a higher level of assistance, aimed at keeping the car more stable, could feel a bit too restrictive to some. Full Drift Assist is the most arcade preset, aimed at fully assisted drifting just by holding gas. Works best with the drift configurations of built-in cars. It makes drifting unrealistically easy, but some people have asked for this, so here it is. Moving on to steering input options, the relative steering speed. If enabled, the steering speed setting is applied to the steering wheel itself. If disabled, the steering speed setting is applied to the steered wheels on the ground instead of the steering wheel. Personally, I prefer this disabled. Moving on to steering input options, the relative steering speed. If enabled, the steering speed setting is applied to the steering wheel itself. If disabled, the steering speed setting is applied to the steered wheels on the ground instead of the steering wheel. Personally, I prefer this disabled. The input authority can be set from 0 to 10. It determines how much your steering input can overrule the car's self-steer force when you turn inwards while the car is oversteering. A lower value will allow the car to resist your input more if you're trying to turn inwards while the car oversteers. A higher value will give you more direct control, but it makes oversteering easier. Think of a lower setting like having a looser grip on the steering wheel and letting it pull back if it wants to. A higher setting is more like holding the steering wheel firmly at a certain position. The steering limit offset. This one changes the steering angle cap for turning inward. Just keep it at zero. And the last one, counter steer limit offset. Changes the steering angle cap for counter steering. This only applies to manual counter steer input, not the car self steer tendency. Higher values make counter steering more responsive than vice versa. Now the next chapter is called self-steer tendency. These settings affect how the car's natural self-steer tendency behaves. Manual counter-steering is not affected by these. Use steered wheels option. If enabled, the car self-steer force will be based on the forces at the steered wheels. This is more realistic, but can feel less stable at times. If disabled, forces will be measured at the rear wheels regardless if they are steered. This is not realistic, 
but it yields a more stable feel. The response option adjusts how aggressively the car self-steer force ramps up before it caps out at max angle. This does not affect manual counter-steering. Higher values will make the car feel tighter, causing its self-steer force to fight harder to go straight. Lower values will make the car more loose, as the car self-steer tendency won't be as aggressive. The max angle option represents the maximum steering angle that the car self-steer force is allowed to reach. You can always counter-steer more than this manually, but this will cap the car's own self-steer tendency. To damping, how much damping force to apply to the car self-steer force? Without damping, the car self-steer force might overshoot and oscillate left and right when trying to straighten out. Damping helps it to settle down. I wouldn't recommend using more damping than necessary as too much can cause unwanted vibrations in some cars. So this was it. I hope you liked and you learned something. Go and experiment on your own with the settings to see which one you like most.